a resolution to address the provision of the ordinance number 2021-08 regarding the use of face coverings in response to executive order 2021-23 issued by the governor on May 11, 2021. This issue will be discussed in executive session. Do I have a motion? Yes, so a second. Okay. Is the proper motion is second? If there's any discussion, if not, all those in favor, please say so by aye. Aye. All those opposed, like sign. We're now going to executive session. We have just reconvened from executive session from receiving legal advice, at which time no action and no vote is taken. We went into executive session to receive legal advice in reference to resolution number 2021-15, which is a resolution to address the provision of ordinance number 2021-08 regarding the use of face coverings in response to executive order number 2021-23 issued by the governor on May the 11, 2021. At this time, we were entertained. Madam Mayor, I would make a motion that we adopt option A. I second that one. It's been motion and second that we adopt option A of the resolution. We are open for discussion. Well, I guess I'll start it off. Um, provision A, well, well, option A here, what we have proposed is uh, at this time where if you're a business to the public, well, businesses now here in the city of Florence, it will be encouraged that they wear face masks due to the uh, the governor's executive action. However, on option A, it requires that if you are in a city building, you are to maintain wearing uh, face covering if you're in a city building. Again, I wish I, I wish we had a better option uh, to choose from, but I think uh, that'll tie our city up in courts uh, for the near future. And I don't want to expense the, the city resources on litigation at this point. Um, I honestly uh, I think that at this point, uh, this city should take leadership on this issue, um, you know, and 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 try to move this city forward, following science, um, not political convenience, but following science, um, and how we uh, continue to move this city forward. Um, in addition to that, I think that we're watching um, our power for the city of Florence and the many municipalities across the state. Um, our power being of, of home rule of home rule, excuse me, is being slowly dripped away through the executive order. Um, so with that, with our options being very limited, um, I would recommend and I will hope that council join me in voting for option A. I understand that it, it, it's just that there may be some uh, inclination that it may cause some confusion that we are essentially still requiring people to wear masks. However, I think if we're gonna show leadership on this issue and really um, you know, show that we're behind science, I think we should continue to encourage it for our businesses. But here uh, at our public home, we're gonna require you to have masks. Um, right. Amen. Okay, and we have several hands here. Um, Councilman Jabaini, a pro tem Jabaini. Thank you. Mm -hmm. First off, taking a step back um the 
resolutions that are presented today are obviously in response to the governor's executive order yesterday. We have had for a year um, this mask mandate in place. And we have seen over the time of this last year, huge spikes in COVID. Um, the city of Florence during January was experiencing over 200 new cases per day, multiple deaths in Florence County per day. And it was a, it's a deadly disease, number one, it still is a deadly disease. And it was a very, very scary time for so many of us who have had loved ones who have lost their lives, for family members who have contracted COVID. And it is only as a result of people jumping in and getting vaccinated that we have seen this downturn. So let's not lose sight of the fact that we have had the face mask ordinance has been great. It has, I think, helped save lives. The social distancing has been great, but the difference maker has been people getting vaccinated. In fact, this week is the first week nationwide that we have seen a 20, over 20% 20 reduction in new COVID cases nationwide, simply because we have a, over 100 million people vaccinated. And so, my first statement to those to to our members of Florence community is that we have 43% of our people in the state of South Carolina have gotten their first vaccine shot. 35% have had both vaccine shots. But what we know is that to hit the number that we all need, we need to be at 70 to 80%. That is critical for us and we are nowhere near that. The CDC has come out and said today that people who have gotten both vaccine shots are now able to wear no face mask, both indoors and outdoors. That is great news. That is great news for all of us. And I, all of us who have gotten our vaccine shots, we're all very grateful for that and glad to see that. My concern, while we are, while both option A and option B remove the mandate, as the governor has, has indicated, but we are taking this affirmative action either way on businesses to require businesses that are um, to say that anybody has to wear a face mask. The distinction is option B says that that same rule that would apply to businesses would also apply inside city buildings. In my opinion, option B is the better option because I think most people are going to be watching the news, going to be reading the papers, going to be seeing TV, and they're going to see, number one, the governor said it's not uh, required anymore. They're going to see our decision, whether it's a resolution A or B, saying we're not requiring it for other businesses in the city. And I think there's a concern that they would come into our city building saying, I've been vaccinated. CDC says I don't have to wear it anymore inside the building. You've created a ordinance that says it's not required, but now we're saying that you have to have it. And there's a potential for conflict and confusion. Whereas I believe if we were to choose option B, we would not have that same risk of confusion. I mean, the science, I agree with you. The face masks have been very effective. Absolutely. The, all of the uh, precautions that CDC has recommended have been very effective. And we, as a council, have been, I think, very responsible in the way that we have gone about it. I think given the current circumstances where yesterday there were 12 new reported uh, COVID cases in Florence County, uh, only 12 as opposed to over 200 in January. There was zero deaths. Uh, I do think the risk factors are significantly lower because of the vaccinations. I think we've seen that significantly. Um, my preference, personal preference is option B 
because I think we would be in a better position to have less confusion for our front desk staff or our uh, people that are greeting the public. And we would still strongly encourage everybody who comes into our building to wear a mask. The face mask would still be available. We would publicize it, strongly encouraged. Uh, our employees, <clears throat> city employees would still be wearing face masks. So that's something that would be having, it's just the people coming in, the public coming in that we would strongly encourage them as we're gonna continue to strongly encourage all businesses to have their uh, people to, to maintain face masks. That is something that we're going to continue to do as well. So for those reasons, I believe we are better served by being consistent with the city of Florence biz, buildings to operate and to have the same encouraged, strongly encouraged approach that we are saying businesses inside the city of Florence should have. And for those reasons, I personally would prefer option B over option A. The chair recognizes Councilwoman Barnes. Um, I, uh, my first option is not on the table, and that is we continue with the mask. Um, that's not an option that we can take today. However, my, I, I guess as as a leader, I don't believe that we should ask the people to do something that we don't. And so my concern is we are, we will, most people don't come to this city building. They mail, mail in their, their water bills. They are, they are being told that they don't have to wear their mask anymore. And so for the few people that do come, they will be told that they've got to wear a mask. I think that that sends a double message because the, the general public don't come to the city building. And we're saying, you don't have to wear a mask, but if you come around me, you've got to wear a mask. And I think that we, I, I think it does send a, a double um, confusing message. If it's okay for them out there, why would it not be okay for us in here? And so I, I, I think if we, we're either going to do it or we're not going to do it. And so um, I would say be, get vaccinated. Please get vaccinated so that we will not um, return back to where we were. Um, but if we are going to follow what the governor has already put in place, we've got to, if we're going to do it, we've got to do it together and not divide it. And I think we divide this the city with protect me, but you okay. So I, I too will agree with um, plan B. The chair recognizes Councilman Brian Dreddick. Yes, ma'am. You know, um, Councilman McCall said follow the science and for the past year, we've asked people to do that. And the science said, you know, you, you need to wear a mask you need to socially distance you need to do these things well today the cdc said that if you've been vaccinated you don't have to wear a mask inside or outside and so me and councilwoman barnes we've both been vaccinated you know and if we go with option a we're going against the science the science is saying that we can be beside each other with no mask but option a of our ordinance is going to say go against the science and we're going to require you to continue to wear a mask. And that's my problem with option A is that if we follow the science and it says do this for a year, then we should do it now. And we shouldn't put in an ordinance that exempts the science that we've been following to put them in place. The other thing is we've had four to six cases. We got four to six cases probably in the city, 12 in the county, four to six in the city, zero deaths. That's 0.00012% of the population of Florence County that has COVID. We should be, at this point, we should be celebrating the citizens of Florence for following the ordinance. And one, I want to commend the council for taking action 
prior to the governor's action to put in the mask mandate. I was at church one Sunday when Mayor Wakila came to tell us, hey, listen, we're a hot spot. We need y'all to participate. We need y'all to, to help us to get this message out that we need people to wear masks, socially distance. And that was the last church service I remember going to because we canceled church and we went to online. I missed church on Easter. First Easter Sunday, I haven't gone to church. I can't even remember when. Good thing my grandmother was passed away or she would have she would have had a fit. But we've done it all. I've been vaccinated. I've, I've done, people have done everything. And now being a public building, we talk about the employees and, and conflict and confusion, but this is a public building. You know, this, this is the, the citizens of Florence's building. And if they've done everything that they've been told to do, and we're going to tell them you still can't come in here because of what we believe, not because of what CDC says, we are sending a mixed signal because at what point, at what point do we say it's okay? Zero deaths, hundred percent vaccination. CDC says, you know, you can kiss, kiss your neighbor, you know, and you're okay. I mean, that, is that where we got to get, or do we follow the science and what they're telling us today and move forward and celebrate the citizens for being responsible, for getting vaccinations, for doing the right thing to get us in this position where no one died today. We should be celebrating that and the efforts done and celebrating council in the city for taking action that got us here. So if you got a vaccination card. Okay. Councilman, have you completed? Yes, ma'am. The chair now recognizes, recognizes Councilwoman Pepgis Hamill. Okay, I'm more concerned with safety than ifs and science. If the federal building is more public than this building and they're still mandating masks and many people do come into this building to pay their water bills. When we were restricting how many could come in at a time, there was lines outside of people waiting to get into this building. It's a matter of trying to make it safe for our employees. I'd rather be safe than dead or sick and know that I could have helped avoid it in some manner. And by mandating that people wear masks in this building, even though it's a public building, I don't see a problem with that. It's being kind to others. How would we know who's vaccinated and who's not? And people like to walk up on you several times in this building before when it was really strong out there, the COVID-19, people come up to me and push them back with my hand. No, you're too close. And I will still do the same thing. I think we're just being trying to be safe and protect our employees by asking people to come in this building with a mask on. People have families at home. When they leave here, this is not the only thing, this is not their life. They have families. We have no idea who's vaccinated and who's not. I don't see a problem if the federal building can mandate people wearing a mask in their building. Why can't we do it in our buildings? I go with option A. Well, I did a second to option A and I stand behind option A. I would hate for the officer in the front, a Lois, to get infected because someone came too close and not that being vaccinated. And the CDC did never said that you will not get COVID if you're not if you're vaccinated. They said you won't be as sick. You won't have to go in the hospital and be on oxygen. They did not say you cannot catch COVID. But if we're going to tell the story, we need to tell the whole story. Maybe the public won't didn't hear the whole thing, but you can still catch COVID. Do I want to be sick at home with symptoms that are similar to the flu? No, I don't when it could have been avoided just by wearing a mask. Well, Chair, I recognize this council. Well, uh, well, we got most of us up here, or some of us got, got up here, got political science degrees. That's not a science degree. I want to hear, I would like to hear the, the words from, uh, from the only person with the science background up here, and that's 
our Madam Mirror. I would like to hear her thoughts on it. Um, because I mean, I, I, I'm not a scientist, you know, I can't, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor, but I think she sees, uh, more cases, uh, of COVID-19 than any of us. We can sit here on our high horse. Many of us got, many of us didn't had COVID-19 and have seen the effect that it has on us, but is willing to say, well, Hey, I didn't had it now. Hey, at this point, let's pass that on to someone else. So I'd rather hear what uh, someone who would actually have a nursing background who actually see COVID cases. I want to hear what she had to say on that issue. Thank you. I'm listening well to all of what the council has to say. I listened to the statement which come, which presented from the CDC, but I want the public to be clearly informed. COVID-19, we have not conquered this disease mm -hmm. yet. We need to be reminded that COVID-19 has mutated. And when you hear the statement of mutated, that simply means it's learning what we're doing, how we're trying to prevent it, and it wants to live. So it changes form so it can keep infecting people. Yes, we have, we have now vaccines, which is great. Because those vaccines, you may notice none of them says it is 100%. I made the comment of thinking about this, think about birth control, it's 99%. There's that 1% opportunity. And if one person who's been vaccinated gets COVID, that's one too many, because our vaccine, they're not 100%. I would encourage everyone, if you hadn't got your vaccine, to please do so. But also on the same token, see, the CDC is telling us, if you've been vaccinated, that when you come among other people who've been vaccinated, your odds of getting COVID is low. That's why you can take your mask off when you're in the building with people who you know have been vaccinated or with you with your family. And if you're going outside, but they're fine if you don't have your mask on, if you're moving, the thing you got the air freely circulating which helps to protect you. But when you're inside a building, and let's say we all went in the building together, even five or 10 of us, and we're not wearing our masks, but the air is not move, moving. And someone came in there with COVID-19, what we call asymptomatic. That means they have the virus, but they're not showing symptoms. They're leaving that in the air. So they're <coughs> still breathing it in. And so if your vaccine is good, maybe you're at 95, you don't get infected, but maybe you're at 5% that that screen, you get infected. So I need for the general public to understand that even if you've been vaccinated, that it decreases the possibility that you may get COVID, but if you do, you won't be as sick and go in the hospital on a ventilator. Understand that's one of the biggest things and concerns when you get so sick that you're on a ventilator. When you're so sick that you have to lay on your stomach in order to breathe. I've had friends and who've had it, even people in the medical profession do what they're supposed to do who still get it. I want everyone to think about what we're doing. We are not over COVID-19. We're listening to the numbers of 40% vaccinated. We need 75% or better. We are not even where we need to be y'all. We're not. It is too soon to start relaxing what we're doing. We're getting comfortable again. And think about overseas, how when the other areas, they got relaxed and they started back over again. Mm -hmm. So we're doing wonderful y'all. And I would like to compliment our citizens who've gotten vaccinated, the ones who are planning to get vaccinated. When I think about the factor that the city of Florence replaced our mandate out even before the governor did last year, because we thought about what can we do to protect our citizens ahead of time. That match mandate was one. Now that more people are getting vaccinated and you know you're vaccinated, you should have some more options because you're vaccinated. But when you don't know who has been vaccinated, I still believe that we need to protect the employees and I believe there will be other businesses who will do the same thing, require that you wait when you come in. I'll sit, our employees, I believe, would do whatever we ask them to do. And I do not believe we should ask them to put themselves in a position of being harmed. I believe that we should still have a mass requirement within the building of Florence. But if you're out there in the yard, the courtyard of the city, that's different. In this building, we don't have the circulation to have that option of having that negative pressure pulling everything out. So me personally, in the medical field, having my family in the medical field, going in every time when I go in the hospital, yes, we need to have our masks on here. Yes, there are gonna be some people who are not gonna to wanna to do it, 
for those people, there have been people who didn't want to do it when it was mandated throughout. And I don't believe that we can actually start saying perception and people won't read. Some people will not, but for the ones who will read, I would go with eight. We need those masks on in this building. And then if they read the sign on that door, they're no. And it's common decent and respect. Put your mask on, come to your business and leave out. But protect the employees is my goal. Because I think about one of the reasons why this mask mandate came up. There were people who was in the industry of serving waiters and stuff that they were like, we can't even say anything. We can't be protected. Because if our owner's telling us, you know, that we, you know, can't wear it or so forth, they wanted that protection. The employees want the protection of having that ability to have the mask. So for me, I'm going to support A because I believe we need to protect our employees and the general public. If you come in here to handle a five or 10 minute service, put on your mask and we'll have the mask available to you. It won't be a cost so you can be protected. I'm going with A because we are not in front of this disease, no matter what your numbers say, and people are saying, well, only this percent died today. Only this percent has it. Well, understand when it comes to COVID, there are people who have COVID who are not diagnosed. So we don't have a exact number because there's some people who go through it and maybe it's not severe enough. They tolerate it and go through it at home. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with science. You're dealing with the reported numbers, not the actual numbers. Those are the reported number as a scientist, as a nurse. I'm supporting A. And I'm asking those that the child queer say we don't have that background to support A. And I believe if I could bring other medical professionals up here, they would support A. And even everybody knows Dr. Fauci and what he speaks of, the masks are not, it's not the time to do away with them. It's not. And that yeah. is, that's my general statement. And I want it to be clear, regardless to how it goes. I will honor what this council says, but I support full heartedly A. And the chair now recognizes, you want to- I'll defer to- the Chair recognizes Councilwoman B. I agree Barnes, with- I say B. <laughs> I, I agree mm -hmm. um, um, somewhat with, with Mayor um, because she does know. And, and I really hate that we are in the position that we've got to decide from A or B. However, I really still think A is still the same thing as B other than just in this building. So we we are not affecting change for the people that go into the grocery stores, that, that go in shopping. It, we are saying that they are free to be without masks. I really wish that we could say mm -hmm. um, we continue with the mask because that's where I believe it. my, my problem is because we are not affecting any change out there, I, I, I think that in this office space, people will still wear their mask. They will, they will still do that. However, it presents confusion and a problem when we are, because I, I just think there are some groups out there that's gonna come and test just because, just because. The, the best thing is what um, 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 Councilman Moore said and, and, and Mayor um, uh, said, but I just think that we're still saying the same thing. A and B, the only difference is we will, not, we will continue to wear masks in this building, but all over Florence, we won't. And so that, I, to me, it sends a missed message um, the best option is if it wasn't that. So um, that's that's just where I am. I, I agree with the science. We need to continue. I agree with that. Do we have chair recognizes pro tem and following the pro tem the chair recognizes Fox yes. um, I, I I think we are all universally in agreement that the wearing masks has been extraordinarily effective, and that we are put in this position because of the governor's order. That's why we're here. Otherwise, we would not be even having this meeting today. So we're all in agreement on that. Uh, I, I will say that the comments from the mayor you have, have raised the question in my mind. And I would ask our city attorney, 
Um, if we were to go with option A for the time being, and, and Jim, I don't know if you got to get up or whatever and talk about it, just so for our benefit, let's say we were to pass option A now, which says we're encouraging strongly everybody to continue to wear masks. That is, we're not saying don't wear a mask. We are encouraging everybody to continue to wear a mask, number one. Number two, it just says that in the city buildings, you're required. It, that's, that's really the only distinction. That's it, correct. If we were to go with option A now, and we were to continue to see a change, let's say a da does downward trend continue, improvement occur over the next, say, few weeks or month, would we be able at a later time, let's say in June, to come back and say, you know what, we, we're continuing to see progress, we're continuing to see the numbers come down, we now want to go with option B, and we're going to pass resolution B uh, in June. Is that an option available to us? Sure it is. Absolutely. Okay, so if we were to go with option A now, we would still have the ability, which again, just for clarity, option A says everything's the same. We're encouraging everybody to wear a mask, but we're saying you don't have to in other buildings except for the city. We could then at a later time, let's say June, come back and say, all right, we're now going to change it so that it's encouraged in the city as, in the city buildings as well. Yes. And this whole the whole city ordinance was always, it was passed originally and through the year, a little over a year now, as it's been amended from time to time and extended from time to time. It has always recognized that this is a moving, changing event. So there's absolutely no question that council could revisit this, whether you passed A or B. Right. You could come back and revisit it later. Um, no question about that. What I would, at this time, I would ask that uh, we, I'm, I'm going to change my position and I'm going to say that I think for now, I think let's go with A, but let's keep it first and front and on the for, forefront and, and so that we can revisit it a few weeks from now, even possibly put it on the June agenda. And let's have it on the June agenda to be revisited then. And maybe we'll see what the what things look like at that time. And again, the only question is do we mandate it for city employee for people coming in the city building or not? That's the only real question. Is it mandated? It's encouraged all the way across the board, period, regardless. Um, but is it mandated? And so I think that question could be put on the June agenda. Is that right, Mr. City Manager? Okay, so I, I would encourage us, let's go ahead and adopt um, option A for now, and then let's put it on the agenda for June and see what the trend looks like between now and the June meeting. Chair recognizes Councilman McCall. Thank you, <clears throat> Madam Mayor. Um, and again, I, I agree with what Georgia said and Teresa and Ms. Moore, and what Peaches is saying as well. Um, sorry, Mr. Thonia Barnes. I am no, so sorry about that. Time. I am stealing. <laughs> but, but I think what the, the optics, not the optics of that, what, 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 what it all seems, that's my word optics, <laughs> is we're saying we're changing the ordinance because of the executive order. All right. All of us saying we wish we still can, we still, the executive order, excuse me, we still wish the ordinance was still in place. However, because of the executive order, we are here at this point. Okay, so we're so the executive order said we can no longer uh, uh, refuse the his emergency uh, his emergency state of emergency to require masks. So therefore, we're here. But what do we do? We do have authority to regulate the building uh, of which we're in now. So what do we have the authority to mandate? And that's the city the city building because it protects the employee. At this point, the public. You know the, the 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 executive order has said we cannot do it for the public at large. However, as far as we have in the in this building here, we'll, for which we have the authority, I think if we're thinking about protecting the the employees of this building, um, as well as the by the the people that come in and out of the building, I think option A is not. It's, it regardless of what is passed, it's going to be some confusion on it regardless of what's passed. Um, but I think option A does show that we, you know, 
we're changing it only because of the position that we're in. Um, and I think we have the authority uh, to do so, to act in this building alone. And I want to continue uh, for us to show leadership on this issue. So I think option A will be uh, the best option for us. But um, we again, we can bring it back up at another time and, and revisit it and just strongly encourage it at a later date. I think that's a good idea as well, because um, I think Councilman Braddock has made a valid point as well. He said, at what point is enough is enough? And I get that. I totally understand. It. Um, however, I recall being in the same position last year. Um, before I got married, we were planning to have this big wedding. Uh, the numbers were driving down. My wife was sending all these invitations out, got me up all night. <laughs> And then I think around June, in the middle of June, we had some of the largest cases, you know, that at that time um, that we've seen in this country. So I don't want us to get caught in a position where we're saying, oh, yeah, everybody, you know, relax your position. And then at the same time, um, you know, we're, we're they're, 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 they're calling us to lead on this issue. And I think we want us to we want the citizens of Florida to be cautious still. Um, we're not mandating it for the entire city, but. I think in this building for to protect our employees and to show leadership on this issue, I do think um, that that would be a great idea. Thank you. Madam Mayor, one of the things that come up a couple of times is uh, you know, the issue of potential confusion, but I think for the record, it's important for us to note that with option A, we have eight different exceptions, you know, religious beliefs, um, medical issues, behavioral conditions, you know, uh, you know, also things that could be subjective. And my concern is if we do look to revisit in June, which is, you know, I guess our meeting is about three weeks away, you know, that we, that we will even further the potential of the confusion, you know, with, with everyone. If, you know, why, it, especially, you know, when we talk about, you know, numbers, like you said, no matter what the numbers say, but, if we take a position of no matter what the numbers say, then what is going to be different? What what are we going to base a decision on in three weeks that would be different than today if it's no matter what the numbers say? You know what I mean? So what there has to be some type of something that we're listening to or we're looking at to make a decision. It can't be just based on our perception or our notion or our you know, what we believe is good today versus what we believe is good in three weeks. It, it's got to be based on, you know, the numbers or data. So it, if we're going to revisit in three weeks, I, I want to, what I would like to know for clarity and for the citizens of Florence so that they would know what to expect, you know, what, what should they look for to see in three weeks that would make us say that if you come to a public building, you know, to pay your water bill, and you don't have a religious belief exemption or you don't have a medical or behavioral condition and if you're not under six years old then you have to make a didn't you have to wear a mask for the next three weeks what in june are we going to look at is it going to be 75 percent you know once we hit 75 percent vaccination rate in the city of florence and the state of south carolina and the country what is the marker because i think what people are getting um, frustrated with is is that we've been told, hey, if you do this, you know, we'll flatten the curve. If you do this, if you do this, if you do this, if you do this, and if you do this, and they've done those things, and now we're saying, you know what, you can, you don't have to wear it because of you know the the action of the governor. We as council are saying we're not going to mandate a mask in the city unless you come to to a city building, but in three weeks we may change that. And they're like, well, I mean, I've done everything that I've been told to do and we're still in the same situation. So I would like to at least from your medical, you know, position, at least get some kind of clarity <laughs> on what is our basis moving forward that changes from option A to option B. Chair, recognize the sponsor one more. I think in three weeks, we're looking to see if there's an upward or a downward trend. If there's an upward trend in three weeks, we may put our citywide mandate back. But we are hoping for a downward trend in three weeks. And if the trend is downward, we may take away option A. 
and use option B. We need to see which way it's going in three weeks or at our, by our next meeting, whether we want to continue with option A, take it away completely, but we have to look to see what's happening with it. Right now, it's still pretty uncertain which direction it's going to go in. Look at some of the other countries what's happening. That could very well happen here. So we have to keep our eyes on that target. And in three weeks, we'll know something. We'll know we'll know more. It not may not be a lot more, but we will know more. We've been knowing more every day. Chair recommend Councilman Well, thank you, Councilman Brady. I think you're right. Three weeks is not enough time. I think we should probably push it back to the July meeting. So I'm going to amend my motion. Um, I'm going to admit my motion that we adopt option A and we revisit it um, at the July meeting uh, after we have more information. You have a second to amend it? I'll second. Jim Paul Monteri, correct procedure. And what you'll do is discuss that amendment and then vote on the amendment. And then if the amendment passes, then you go back and vote on the original motion as amended. So we're discussing now the amendment, shall we? <laughs> Um, <laughs> Chair recognizes Councilwoman Moore. I'll agree with the amendment. That will give us more time to see which way, which which way is trending, up or down, and then we'll come back and and reevaluate the situation. So, all those in favor of the amendment of the first motion, please recognize by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. So now the first motion has been amended. The amendment motion is now that we accept the item A and revisit it again in our July meeting. Okay. Do we on that? Do we have a motion now for that amended first? So moved. Second. So it's been amended. Motion is second that we accept the amended motion of item A, which is stating that we will accept the resolution A option and revisit it in July's meeting. All those in favor, please signify. Well, if there's no other discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, like side. Nay. Okay. So let's do that by um, hand count so I can see. How many um, for amendment A? Please raise your hands. Let it reflect that we have two, four, four votes for A with the amendment. All those opposed, please. And three against. Let the records reflect that the option. A with a revisitation in July as fast. That concludes our items on our agenda. This is all the discussion. We entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. So move. <laughs> we have a second. We've got a second. Second. Just proper motion second. All in favor, please signify by aye. Aye. Any opposed by nay. We are adjourned. Aye.